December in the year 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special edition of the assignment program. I'm your host. My name is Andrew Mwans, and I've continued to be on a path of discussing the Zambia that we want. We've featured and spoken to different corporate entities. We've spoken to political parties and leaders from various political parties. We've spoken to cadres. We've spoken to artists. And today yet, tonight, rather yet, is another night that we speak to one of the prominent artists that we have in our country by the name of Brian Wembia, also known as Biflo. Biflo, good evening, and uh, welcome to the assignment. Good evening, Andrew, and good evening, viewers. Um, happy to be on the assignment after a long time. Happy to have you. Thank you so much. Those that are joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet Channel 1, the Top Side Decoder Channel 104, thank you so much for joining this conversation. Yes, those that are joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet, uh, and as well as uh, those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa via our social media platforms, uh, our handle is Ask Movie TV on Facebook, and as well as Ask Movie TV, that is our YouTube channel. Get to those two particular platforms and give us your contributions regarding the topic that we have at hand we are discussing the Zambia that we want and this is the second uh, rather seventh uh, series edition uh, of this particular episode that we're having tonight. Now let's begin off from um, I think a personal note. Um, you've been on the receiving end of brutality, all right? The, your recent one being on the 15th of November uh, this particular year 2020 you did highlight on your Facebook uh, page that around uh, 2345 you are attacked by patriotic front cadres. Let's begin from there. Why would you, would you be attacked by political party cadres? Um, thank you very much once again for, uh, for featuring me on this uh, important program and also for asking me such an important question. Um, I think that uh, one of the reasons cadres or cowards or thugs, as we, I would like to call them, would attack a person like me is because they have something that they feel they are trying to protect. And I'm saying something that they feel they are trying to protect. And uh, this is uh, got something to do with interests. They have got interests that they are trying to secure, either for themselves or on behalf of their paymasters, and we know who their paymasters are, uh, we're talking about the leadership of the party that they belong to. And uh, so the reason they attacked me according to them, because they, they did mention during the attack, they said, uh, We are doing this to you because uh, to be interpreted that in English, because you insult our leadership. So then I asked them to say, who is your leadership? And then they mentioned to say, you insult ministers and you insult the president. I said, oh, really? And who are you? Then they say, we are PF cadres. Uh, we can actually, in case you are looking for us, these are our names. They mention names like we are, ask for Bulldog or ask for 99 at Intercity. Uh, they, they mention their names. So... Uh, because they are saying they are representing a party and they are representing their leadership, it means that the reason they are attacking me is because they do not agree with the things that I talk about whenever I try to challenge the status mm. quo. But coming to what they spoke about, you insult their leaders. Mm -hmm. Do you insult their leaders? I do not insult their leaders. I do not insult anyone at all. I do not have the capability uh, to insult because I have no reason to insult. I think that... Uh, People that insult and people that attack others physically by using whether it's machetes or, or using knives or using guns, uh, those people, I call them cowards because they do not have the ability to reason with you. They, have, they, do not, they lack the intellectual capability or the intellect to be able to reason with another citizen and therefore they resort to what they think is simpler for them and unfortunately what they feel is easier for them to attack a person who is intellectually sound is to use you know the physical uh, things such as uh, weapons mm -hmm. well, when the attack was you know was 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 done on you um, I'd like to understand some of the steps that you took did yeah. you report this to mm -hmm. the police mm -hmm. uh, what happened after you were attacked well, I, I think I went, against, uh, I went against the advice that I received from, 
from people around me, my circle, my management team, my family, uh, including my fans and my followers who advised me to say, uh, going to follow the, the right channels such as, you know, the authorities or the institutions that are supposed to safeguard the law uh, or the law enforcers such as the police or the courts is a non-starter. That's according to the people that were advising me to say this one, you, it will not go anywhere. But I went against that advice because I wanted to prove them wrong or right. Or I wanted, to, I wanted the police and the authorities in general to prove themselves uh, wrong or right for, for claiming that uh, they are able to assist a person who is found in a situation like mine. So I did uh, take all the necessary steps that one needed to take and uh, the beginning of the each and every day to find out how far we had to go with this case, what the police would do about it. Mm. And uh, in the beginning, the police seemed very much interested in the, in the matter. And I remember speaking to different officers at Central Police who would even say, what's happening to our country is unfortunate. You know, these, these people are calling themselves cadres or these thugs. Uh, what they are doing is wrong because they even undermine the police uh, itself, the, the, the institution of the police itself. And um, as we began the process, you, could, you, you begin to feel that there is a certain power now that is beginning to you know, intervene in the matter because suddenly uh, you know, the police begin to suggest ideas that I think to me um, it did not really make sense because, first of all, in the beginning, uh, the police did not issue a statement that they were supposed to issue. Whenever a thing like that happens, you expect the police spokesperson to report on that matter. And when that did not, you, that, that was not published by the police, it was published by me on my Facebook page, despite me having reported to the police, I actually reached out to the police spokesperson and she confirmed that she was aware of my situation and I was surprised that no statement came from the police. Did you ask why? Uh, I, at that point I did not. The only statement that I saw was from uh, a member of the Patriotic Front by the name of uh, Mr. Honorable Kelvin Sampa. Mm -hmm. He's the only person that issued a statement and that statement was to distance the party from the people that attacked me and say, saying uh, those people we do not know who they are I think uh, if I'm not mistaken there was a mention of these are like you know gangs it's not like a, uh, an individual so it would be difficult for them to intervene something in those lines but uh, the police uh, did not take a further step I, I went on to follow up again and later on I was asked to say I was told to say there was a possibility that we would go to government complex to go and get the CCTV footage in order for us to be able to see who did that. Uh, that's from one of the, the police officers. Another part from the police that came out was we needed to go together to intercity, uh, maybe if there was manpower, but I would be informed at a later stage in order for me to be able to identify. see mm. if we can identify those people, which again, when I consulted, uh, I was encouraged to say that's a very risky thing to do. How do you go to a territory where thugs that have mm. attacked you and that continue to threaten to attack you and many other allies are found, you know? But after that, uh, I have not heard from the police. And uh, it's, I realized... It's precisely been, I think, exactly 35 days uh, from the time that incident happened. It happened last month on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Today is the 20th of uh, December. Where does this put 
the governance of our country in terms of respecting uh, the institutions that have been, you know, uh, mm. mandated to, 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 to uphold, you know, the, the rule of law? I think in terms of uh, governance, uh, we should all agree that uh, our systems are no longer what they used to be. And unfortunately, if the governance system or if, if the leadership of the nation does not uh, act on some of these things that are happening in our country, then it means that there is no political will in ensuring that you know, we turn things around to where things used to be, where the police as an institution has its power and its mandate respected for them to be able to execute their duties because as things stand, uh, the thugs or the cadres or the criminals have more power than the police. We have seen situations ourselves where you go for an event where you are being screened to go in, but the moment the cadres come, they insult uh, the police verbally. You can hear the insults and saying, because that's how they feel. And the fact that government is not doing anything about this, the fact that the leadership of the country is not doing anything about this, it means that we have a weak leadership in place. And uh, unfortunately, there is nothing much that we can do as citizens if our leaders are not, are not acting. The, more, the, 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 all, the only thing we can do is to demand um, you know, for you know, a stronger system, and we can only do that through the ballot or through using our voices, but never using violence. And unfortunately, we're dealing with people that use violence and that thrive on violence and that you know, condone and tolerate the violence and continue to use intimidation to stop people. Mm. I think we, we've seen demanding. the leadership of this country. I think it would be a disservice for you to say there hasn't been such commitment such, such commitment to end this, such, so some of these vices. I think we've seen uh, the president, you know, speak to some of these issues of political violence, speak to some of these issues of violence, and I think he's, um, uh, he's, he's stood tall to denounce uh, violence, but yet we, we still, we've still seen, you know, mm -hmm. violence, especially being perpetrated by, uh, by those that are uh, coming from the patriotic front, you know, party. Uh, well, um, the head of state, that is the, the highest office, orders people to not to engage in political violence, yet the opposite is being done. Mm -hmm. I, I do know for a fact that you've described this entire thing as, you know, uh, whoever we have a weak, you know, leadership. But where does this put the highest office in the land? When the highest office in the land says, don't do this, yet people still, the, to, still do the same thing that the president is saying don't do. Well, um, you know, there are many times when people, when we, we all try to protect the presidency, um, mm. you know, by saying things like, oh, no, we have a good president, but maybe he has surrounded himself with the wrong people. Uh, but for how long? And for how long are we going to say that? Are we going to continue seeing our country eroding into something that we don't know, and then we continue saying, no, the president is a good person, but the people that he has surrounded himself with are the ones that are deceiving him. Uh, if he issues a statement and people do not follow it, then it means maybe they believe that he doesn't mean it. Because we have seen situations in the past where a president or even a minister in charge of a particular ministry will say enough is enough to this. For example, uh, you know, do you remember the time of Tujidijidi? Mm -hmm. There was uh, a statement that was made to say, Tujirijiri is banned, and indeed Tujirijiri was banned, like it had to disappear because there is authority from whichever office issued that statement. But if you are going to issue a statement and say this should not be done, and then people continue doing it, and the people that you are telling are your people that believe they work for you and they are still doing it, and it means that there is something in your system that uh, needs some attention and for me what I would suspect is that in that system down there there are still other people then that would still tell those people to say those are just statements go ahead and continue attacking people go ahead and continue intimidating those that have got divergent mm. views. I think you've mentioned something that a lot of people have spoken to as well the issue of the president being surrounded by wrong people in your own individual capacity do you think the president is surrounded by the right people? <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Um, of course, I, I want to believe, first of all, that the leadership of any nation is derived from the same nation.
from the community, from the society that makes up that nation. So, every time we say something negative or positive about the leadership, we are talking to our own communities because these leaders come from our communities. So, uh, it is safe to say the president is indeed surrounded by a lot of wrong people. The majority are wrong people. But we can't say everyone is a wrong person. Uh, it's, either they've, it's either they are dealing with the wrong system which they have failed maybe to, to, to deal with or they have created in fact, they have created a, a wrong system, the, like the system of Qadarism. I don't I remember a time in history where, where Qadarism was, was this worse, the way, the way it has become today. Um, so there are, there are individuals, I believe, in government who, who are, sound, who are mm. of sound mind. But the term you use, the, the majority are, are wrong people, those that are surrounding the president. Yes, yes, because if the majority were right people, things would have been going better in the country. So it means that the, the, the point in authority is the president. Yes. All right. Yes. And um, in, in in his own wisdom, he appointed all the, all the, all the people are saying a majority are, are the wrong people. Could it be that probably the wrong guy in this equation could be the president? Uh, I, I do not want to uh, speak on behalf of uh, you know the 17 million Zambians in terms of who is the right president and who is the wrong president for them because. I believe the power to vote for a leader is up to an individual. But if you ask for, for my opinion, I think that the president has made wrong decisions. He has been making wrong decisions. And uh, I do not know whether he makes the decisions himself or he is advised and misled, because I also want to believe that he has a team. Mm. Uh, we know that the, you know, the presidency is surrounded by a team of advisors. And ultimately it's his decision that takes precedence over Definitely, over because after you are advised, you have to make a decision and say, oh, this is the step that I'm going to take. But uh, if you do the, the opposite of mm. what you've been advised, then it's you to blame. Or if you have been advised and you follow that advice and, uh, and uh, you know, that advice leads you to, you know, failure. I, I would try to be... Um, to be careful with ourselves, or are we trying to be uh, a bit respectful if we say um, the wrong issue in this equation is mm -hmm. not the president, mm -hmm. but the people that are surrounding the president? Is it that we're trying to be not disrespect, dis disrespectful to the president by not just calling you know, despair, 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 that look, uh, you are the, you are ultimately uh, the decisions come from you, and so you're the wrong person. Are we trying to be less disrespectful when we, you know, when we say maybe it's not him with, with the problem, it's, it's actually the people that surround him? Well, uh, I believe that a government is made up of, of institutions, and it's not made up, it's not about one person, it's not a one-man show. Uh, you know, there's cabinet, for example, you mm. know, the, the, the whole cabinet consists or comprises of the president himself, and the ministers, you know, that mm. sit in those offices. When you go to the ministries, they've got permanent secretaries as well, and the directors of the ministries as well, and many other people at the senior leadership level. So I believe that what we, what we have, the, situ the situation that we have is one where, like I'm saying, I'm saying we can, for how long are we going to say the president is surrounded by wrong people? Or for how long are we going to hear people say, oh, he's a good man, but he has surrounded himself with wrong people? So it's the collective. It's the, it's the government. It's a government in office or the government in power that is not doing the, the right thing. That is not, you know, moving in to do the right thing. So, for example, the president has got a minister of home affairs, and the minister of home affairs is the one that uh, you know supervises or superintends over the security. Zambia police service mm. or the security wings and if that minister does not do his job uh, who are we going to blame I don't think I will go straight to blaming the president but of course the, 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 the blame that I'll put on the president is for picking a minister or for appointing a minister that does not do the job of giving, you know, of letting the police do its job, but allowing cadres to be the ones to be on top of, you know, the police service. Mm. And then we'll blame the minister for his incompetence or for his inability 
to you know take care of that situation that we're talking about mm. so it's it's the collective it's a collective yes. really before we can get to the issue of um, how we should begin to position ourselves as a country uh, to begin to address the issues of uh, cadarism um, You've spoken about something very, um, you know, very interesting regarding how decisions are made and how we shouldn't really maybe just blame one person because this is a collective government is made of different agencies and you know it shouldn't be on the president. Would you agree with me that um, we, the people of Zambia, are a co-author of our own misfortune because we are the people that elected these people into office? Yes, I do agree. I do agree. We got ourselves in this uh, this situation or this mess that we have found ourselves in. Uh, let me just call it what it is. It's mm. a mess because uh, our economy is not doing well. Uh, the performance of the kwacha is terrible and unprecedented. Uh, there's no respect for the rule of law. Um, there's no tolerance for divergent views. Uh, media houses are closed down for allowing, uh, you know, other people to air their views. Um, you know, musicians are attacked, activists are attacked for speaking the truth or for speaking truth to power. Um, we have seen selective application of, of the law. Uh, we have seen a situation where, you know, uh, certain sections of the society those that are in power are allowed to campaign, whereas others cannot campaign. So when we look at all these things, all these things that have gone wrong in our country, mm -hmm. uh, when we look at the, the debt situation that we have as a country, when we look at the way people, you know, the, the levels of corruption in terms of, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, how, how, how the, 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 the last time you came out so strong to speak about some of those issues, issues of um, high levels of uh, corruption, high mm -hmm. levels of uh, youth unemployment, mm -hmm. and all those issues that you, you, know, you, you and your colleagues uh, speak about, uh, I think one of, the, one of the ministers, minister responsible for Lusaka, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned something very important, that look, you are, very, you are young people, yeah. all right? The president is surrounded by wise people that give him counsel, <laughs> all right? You, the president, the presi in fact, he says the presidency is not a simple... Mm -hmm. Uh, seat. It's, mm. it's surrounded by competent people, the best of minds that advise the president to, you know, on, on some of these issues that you're speaking about. Could it be that we are maybe just getting to look at these, these issues in a, in a wrong lens because uh, those in government are stating otherwise? Mm. Uh, first of all, to answer the, the previous question, I, I, was, I was agreeing to the fact that, yes, we got ourselves in this trouble yeah. that, that we're in. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, competence, uh, first of all, I think that even, even the, the person that you have, you have spoken about, the, the minister of, uh, for Lusaka province, for me personally as an individual, if you ask for my opinion, I do not understand how he got the position that he has because when I look at the things he says and the things he does, uh, I do not think that that is the caliber of the leadership that I expect to have and be proud to say I am being led or my nation is being governed by that caliber. Is, 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 isn't that an insult to the appointing authority? Because I think the appointing authority saw, what, saw it fit uh, to have Well, it is, it is not an insult. If the appointing authority thinks that is the caliber of the people that would make up you know, his leadership structure, then it's unfortunate uh, because I do not agree. Personally, I do not agree because, uh, like you have said, uh, during the, the time that you are referring to when this man was saying things like, uh, oh, the president is surrounded by intellectuals, uh, we disagreed even at that same time. That's the reason we were offering divergent views because we felt if the president cannot fire uh, people that are incompetent, then we might as well, as citizens, demand that he does so, or we might as well demand that if he thinks that those people are, are, are intelligent enough to solve the problems that the nation is facing, mm. then let him put his foot down and make sure that they do their work. And the thing that followed after that was the same minister for Lusaka province issuing threats uh, to people like myself, and uh, you know other other uh, young people, the youth of this country, by saying things like, 
uh, you are too naked to misbehave, which is a very serious threat on my life. Uh, you know, when a minister says you are too naked, or, or he even adds words like you are, you are stinking, uh, what you say is uh, stinking nonsense, meaning it, it holds no value or water to him because to, according to him, he believes that he is among the intellectuals that the president has surrounded himself but with. But isn't he an intellectual? And people Isn't that he an intellectual? I do not agree. I do not think so. I do not think so. I think that uh, uh, there's, there's, we can do better as a nation in terms of uh, the people that should carry the title honorable. Uh, we can't continue referring to honorable people that are going to be attacking us, people that are going to be issuing statements that make cadres to attack us because they've heard it from a minister saying, you are too naked, meaning you are in the open and we can attack you. And so when cadres attack me, I will look around and say, oh, why are they attacking me? Uh, oh, it's, and they are saying, oh, you are too naked. And uh, the people that are regarded as in Tungulushi have been threatening me, then it means these cadres are taking it, that there is an instruction from those people. Mm. So for me, I do not agree that, uh, that there is intellect there. What is there? What is there is incompetence. One of the issues that really also has come out to be very consistent when you, when you, when, 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 uh, you and your colleagues began to speak out is the issue of you guys being sponsored mm. by you know, uh, different, you know, um, NGOs, and mm. that is the reason why you, you, you're speaking the way you speak. Is it, mm. is it true that there's some form of backing that comes, there's some form of money that comes as a result of you guys speaking? Uh, I always find it laughable whenever I hear anyone, especially, you know, government, someone from, from the government, even, or from the, from the, the senior you know, government, you know, structures saying things like, oh, these people are just sponsored. We've had statements from uh, some government officials who say things like, oh, they're just being sponsored by some civil society organizations or by other political parties. And that's why when the police sees them, make sure you break their bones. We've heard all these things like that. I find it laughable because uh, you know that um, you know governments have got access to whatever information that they want about all of us. And for me, I would love to use this platform right now to tell you that that is propaganda. That is propaganda because if they were very serious about those claims that we are being sponsored, where is the evidence? They, they have access to our bank accounts. They have access to, you know, any information that they may need about us. Have they seen anyone transfer money to us? They, 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 they have access even to our communication tools. Have they seen us communicating with uh, political parties or organizations that they saw giving us money and, uh, or, or funded us? I, I don't think so. And uh, there is no evidence to that as well. So I always say it's, it's actually laughable. It's a propaganda that is meant to create a narrative so that people can start to believe that these young people that are speaking out you know, are just being sponsored. We have always spoken out when things are going wrong in the country, mm. but when, things, when people that have been quiet about you know, situations begin to speak out sometimes, you should realize that then things have gone to mm. so, unmanageable so, so, so Some of these you know, people that speak out hold very sensitive and very high uh, officers in this country. Uh, and I meant to believe that, you know, for example, someone like Boman Nusambo, someone who, who holds a very high office in this country, when they say something that uh, Biflo is being sponsored, mm. I don't think they're speaking from a <laughs> point, uh, point of not having knowledge. <laughs> Probably they should have some intelligent uh, information to suggest, uh, you know, whatever they're saying. Don't you think, uh, I don't believe that a minister could just come up and, and, and start saying things from his head. How it, possible he is that? It's very, very possible. It's very, very possible, especially with the regime that we are dealing with today. This is a regime that has got ministers who are also representatives of constituencies who are capable of lying on the floor of the House in Parliament. The same person you're saying, you're, you're, talking, you're referring to, 
is able to go on the floor of parliament and, and say he speaks to Biflo's parents every day when Biflo's parents are deceased. A person who can claim that he's known Biflo since he was a little boy and he sponsored the beginning of Biflo's career. And anybody that knows about my life or has even listened to my music, has listened to songs like Dear Mama, I Explain My Life, people know that my career started from Roma Side Studios. People know that my, my parents are late, you know. Uh, if someone is going to lie, at a time when I am making a donation in Lusaka West for children with special needs, and he is lying to say I am in his car, I'm in his car at outside parliament, uh, and then today, and, and then you come and tell me to say, you know, people like them have got you call it intelligence information, Integr yeah, of access to, to, to intelligence information. Uh, no, so it's I, I don't agree. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there's been this this back and forth, you mm -hmm. know, battle. I, we don't know if it's serious with you and and, and Boman or Sambo. Is it is it is it a <laughs> Facebook stunt? Is it well, really? There's been you know fights back and forth fights. Well, what, what, what is the beef there, beef with, with Honorable? You know, I, I have reached a, a point or a stage where I think that the best way to go about it is just to ignore him. Uh, because I, I want to believe he's a fan. He's a big fan of either my music or my work or my activism. And uh, I can describe him as an obsessed fan who cannot stop talking about this person maybe that he idolizes. I think he idolizes me a lot that he can't go on without just mentioning my name and mm. he continues to mention my name in the wrong light where he mentions things that do not exist, uh, things like we have known each other for a long time and I will tell you that I have met him, I've, I've, I can tell you the number of times that I've met him. Mm. Uh, I first met him when I was with Chef 187 in 2018 at a launch of a radio station where he was guest of honor. That was the first time. Now, whether in 2018, uh, whether 2018 can be described as my childhood or not, that's according to him, maybe. Uh, I don't know how, what, what he describes as childhood. Mm. Uh, and the, the other time that I met him uh, was the time that I found myself in a trap where I went to deliver a letter at State House and I found that, you know, they had set me up and he was there for for them to create a narrative that I was on their side or that I was no longer speaking for the people. Those are the two times that I'll tell you that I have had a conversation, a conversation with him. But I think that the, the photos that are circulating, uh, there's one photo, it seems as if you were in his office while you were seated with him. Was that in 2018 or... So, so the photo I think that you're referring to is the one I'm talking about where I'm saying the first time I met was, was at the launch of a radio station and I was with Chef 187. So if you check on Chef 187's page or on my page, if you search for maybe the three names, uh, you will find a picture that has the three of us in there. But when the State House incident happened, uh, the propagandists <laughs> cropped out uh, Chef 187 to mm. make it look like we were just the two of us, but uh, we were backstage during that launch of, uh, of a radio mm. station. So I have never been to his office. I don't even know what it looks like. And I've never been to his house. I don't know what it looks like. I have never been in his car. I don't know what it looks like. You never got a money from him? Never. Not a penny. Not even, not even a, a five in way. Nothing. Others that have asked on this platform how they describe the current state of our democracy as we head towards 2021, I've not been getting good answers. Mm -hmm. I featured uh, Archbishop Mpundu, who said we are in a theocracy. Mm -hmm. I featured Pilato, who said we are living in a fifth dome. Mm -hmm. I featured many that have described you know, this um, uh, governance system to be dictatorial. Mm -hmm. How do you describe you know, the, the system we're in as a mm -hmm. country? Are we in a democracy? Mm -hmm. uh, well, how do you describe it? Okay, uh, I think um, earlier I had highlighted some of the things that I do not agree with and some of the things that have changed drastically in our country. The leadership bar has dropped, the selective application of the rule of law, there is corruption, uh, there is a lot of nepotism, there is a lot of tribalism, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, lack of respect for the rule of law. 
there is empowerment of cadres, um, there is intimidation, there is you know thuggery that has been tolerated and accepted and not condemned. There is there are attacks on people like myself and many other you know divergent voices and so many so many other things that have gone wrong in our country. And when you look at the lack of political will in addressing these things that kill our democracy. When you look at a situation where at some point this, this here TV station that we are on right now was closed down. When you look at a situation where radio stations like Kumbuni Radio have been closed before. Look at a situation where prime television which was also offering you know, divergent views or offering a platform for people with divergent views has been closed down. You look at newspapers like the Post have been closed. You look at you know, activists being arrested, activists being threatened, and the violence and all these things, and people can't allow you to just uh, speak. You, you can't even move freely. The freedom of movement is not there. The freedom of expression is not there. The freedom of speech is not there. Journalists like yourselves are being attacked anywhere they go if they are going to look like they are covering, you know, a divergent view. When you look at all that, those are characteristics of a dictatorship. So we are in a mini dictatorship. And I'm saying mini because it is still growing into a bigger dictatorship. And that will take you know, the way Zambian people will respond to it. If the Zambian people continue to tolerate a situation where divergent views are not going to be allowed, then the Zambian people will again be to blame, just like we have said to say, we have put ourselves in the situation we found ourselves in. So we have to demand that those dictatorial tendencies that we have continued to see will come to an end and restore the democracy that's that we, we do, 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 do you see that so hard do, do, do you see that do, you know that commitment and under this under this current administration i do not see it because what i see from the administration are threats uh earlier i think uh you know before we went live i was explaining to you that i was receiving phone calls from people who are calling themselves cadres uh telling me to say they are looking for me two days ago they are looking for pilato uh, they were trying to stop dreams. They were telling me to tell dreams not to go ahead and perform at a particular venue because he, see, he did a song called Wamwankole, you know. When, when you look at this situation and all these things continue to go on and even, you know, ministers continue lying, MPs continue lying even on the floor of the house, we look at all these things and when other people try to speak or express themselves the way I'm expressing myself here, where I'm not even sure how I walk out of that door because the last time I attended uh, a night program, a night event, which was just a movie premiere, I got attacked. It's a dictatorship, unfortunately. It's a dictatorship, unfortunately. Well, um, interesting. Um, you, you've spoken about there's so many things, so many wrong things that this current administration has done. From your lens, do, do you see anything good that this administration has, uh, has brought before the people of Zambia from the time that it, you know, it got into office in 2011? Do you, could you point anything uh, you know, on top of your head that, look, I think we've scored in this particular field? Uh, abolishing the existence of deputy ministers, that was a, that was a good thing. Because, uh, you know, taxpayers' money can't be going to ministers, deputy ministers, when there are so many things that the money can be used for. Uh, that's, I think that's one of the, the successes that I can point out to say, uh, you know, the, the government did well in, in this. Um, the pronouncement, not the actualization, but the pronouncement of things like youth empowerment, that the existence of youth empowerment, for me, that's a positive thing. But unfortunately, I do not know where, whether that empowerment truly exists, but the pronouncement itself was a good start. It was a good step to say, oh, we are going to have youth empowerment. Mm. There was a time when I used to hear about uh, the marketeers' empowerment program. There was a time I used to hear about the bus drivers' empowerment program. I've also heard about the youth empowerment program. I also heard about a youth uh, uh, empowerment program targeting artists. But all these programs, 
uh, I would say they were good pronouncements, but whether they were actualized, you realized, you seem to be cracking your head to, to to just get to find you know something good. You seem to be very you know cracking your it's mind. It's difficult. Very much. It's very difficult when the majority of the things that are happening are wrong, and also when you're living in a society where you can't express yourself. It's difficult to to see what is good, even when you see something that is positive. For example, road construction is a positive thing, but at the expense of the taxpayer, when you look at you know the levels of debt, you look at uh, the situation of you know the the prices at which we are procuring these roads or, or the construction of these roads. Uh, then it's difficult for me to say it's it's a good thing because it's affecting you know the the poor person in Makululu in Kabo where I come from. It's affecting the poor mm. person in, in Shangombo, the poor person in Kamchanga in uh, in uh, in Mufulira. You know, because of, you know, that situation, people cannot have access to proper medication. They will only be given a prescription and they will not afford to go and buy from the pharmacy. You know, you know, so when you look at that, then for me, it's difficult for me to appreciate the existence of the roads because they, they are bringing more harm than good to to the existence of the citizenry and to the thriving and the survival of the citizens of mm. this country. But, 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 but someone will tell you that look, um, infrastructure development are fundamentals of of, of they development. are fundamentals, but not when the money that is supposed to go towards that is going to be you know inflated in order for other people to benefit in their pockets whereas the remaining that is used to do the work ends up doing uh, shoddy works where we are going to see the roads that have not even been around for two years or three years are already you know, in a deplorable state, then we, that's a waste of money. Then that's lack of priority. And I featured Sunday Chanda. I said, look, uh, everybody that is claiming that you know, um, their ministers are true from from the construction of roads, construction of hospitals. Does not have evidence. Uh, wh wh where are they getting these, you know, um, these allegations from? Where are you getting, you know, uh, these issues from that look? Um, like, for example, Pilato said, uh, you know, the roads are a decoration of corruption because mm. many have benefited from the roads. The few have benefited from the roads as opposed to the many, mm. like you and me. Um, when you speak that, look, these are processes of corruption. Is there any form of evidence that you have to back, you know, your, your allegations? Well, uh, the, the prices are, are exaggerated because we also compare the situation to other countries, you know. When we do our research, we look at other countries. We also look at the way things were done uh, previously. Mm. You look at, you know, the way, you know, the, the, the way the, the road constructions uh, are being done, who is doing it. Uh, how are these, you know, contracts? Uh, how competitive are they? Uh, are they given on merit, or uh, you know, what type of systems are we working with in terms of how do you engage? For example, if you are engaging people from the Asian countries, uh, how are they getting these deals? Uh, you know, we we are citizens of this country and we live among these people. We also interact with people that also interact with people and. Uh, it's, it's clear for all to see. You can't tell me that, for example, if we talk about the procurement of the fire tenders, the 42 fire trucks, at that cost of, you know, $1 million, that it should be justifiable. For me, I should say, because the government has told me to say one costs $1 million, and I should just say, oh, the government has spoken. It's the truth. No. Well, I should well, also have my, yeah. my, my personal reasoning to see that it is wrong. All right. Yeah. Um, what do you think the biggest problem comes from? Because uh, um, I don't want to believe that... Selfishness. Uh, I don't want to believe that, uh, you know, these people that are occupying office um, don't know the adverse effects of corruption, mm. don't know the adverse effects of the many things that they've done wrong. Uh, is they it, don't is it deliberate that, look, we, they, are, they are governing this country like this? Or probably it's, it's lack of proper planning, lack of proper leadership, uh, what, what, what would you say is, is the biggest problem really? They, they do not know the adverse effects of, of corruption. What they know as the effects of that corruption is the fact that it enriches them because they are the, 
they are the few that have got access to these resources. So when you are enjoying, when you are in that position, in that sweet position where you've got access to all these resources, it's difficult for you to see the hardships that other people are facing out there. That's why you hear that, you hear times where you complain about what is happening in the nation. Other people will say, oh, those problems that you are highlighting are only happening in your head because they themselves are not feeling it. They are not feeling it because they, they, they are beneficiaries. So they, they do not know the real picture because for them the real picture is the enjoyment that they are having. But if they can travel like some of us maybe who go to different parts of the country to see how people are surviving and how people are suffering, maybe if they The president would disagree with you because uh, I think uh, a week ago there were screaming headlines in the newspapers that he laughs and chuckles mm. when some say that um, the people are, are suffering. And that's what I'm talking about. If the president can issue such a statement, and I'm getting it from you, a journalist, you're, you're confirming that the president said that. To me, that is very disappointing. Then it means that the president does not know what is on the ground. And I want you to tell me, maybe I shouldn't ask you because you are my interviewer, why is the president not aware of what is on the ground? Is it because the people that surround him that we spoke about earlier are not giving him the real picture? That's why he is laughing. If they are not giving him a real picture, then, then that answers the question that we talked about to say, do they know the adverse effects of corruption? Because they are benefiting and they don't care that the majority are suffering. And so they will go ahead and say, everything is okay, uh, boss. And the boss will say, oh, they have told me to say everything is okay. And those of us that will speak to say things are not okay because we are on the ground will be laughed at. And we, uh, like you are saying, the president will laugh and say he laughs when he hears people saying things are not okay in the country because mm. things are not okay in the country. Well, just, just like you say, the divergent view is probably that is your view, <laughs> and that is the view of the president, and it should be respected too, like we're respecting <laughs> yours. Um, we're getting into a very critical year, that is next year, 2021. Uh, we'll be, we make, um, every after five years, we make a decision to choose the leadership of, of our country for the next five years. Um, if this administration is given another tenure mm. or five years to 2026, You've already spoken of the fact that we are living in a mini, demo, in a, in a mini dictatorship. Slowly, our, demo, our uh, the democracy that we, we, we had is, is deteriorating. Um, and, and the civic leadership, um, I mean, the, the civic space, space is shrinking. Uh, shrinking yeah. yeah. Uh, when, this, when this particular you know, administration is given another five years, how will Zambia look like? Mm. I, I do not have the clear picture of what Zambia will look like uh, if we continue to have the same people leading us or governing the nation. Uh, but because of the, the current record and all these things that we have highlighted uh, tonight that we have pointed out, I, I do not see the country, you know, being worthy of being called a democracy. I also do not see a country that is going to be economically viable because as we move right now, it feels like we are on autopilot and we don't know where we are going. We don't see any signs of you know, rectifying the situation that has brought us to where we are today. So the next five years, if we continue with the same leadership, I think that uh, I think that it will be difficult for our children to have an education. It will be difficult for the police to do their job. I think they, I don't know if the, the police, the institution known as the police will still even be able to, uh, to do anything that they are currently able to do in the current uh, circumstances that they found themselves in. I think it's, it's a very big risk to take. Uh, we, we cannot run away from that fact, and I, I don't want to mince my words by, by saying I foresee a situation where things will turn around or they will do things better. Uh, what is it that they will to do better that they have been unable to do uh, between 2011 and today? What is it, what miracle is going to be transformed, is going to be uh, you know, performed in order for things 
to, to get better. Things are, are what they are, and it is clear that people have failed to, to turn things around. Things are that what they are, um, well, the health care system has improved. In what sense? Uh, many hospitals have been built from the time that the PF came into office. Okay, so they, they have been built in order to serve what purpose? To serve your lives. And are lives being saved by the hospitals that, that have been built? Or are they just being built so that people can eat money? We've seen an extension of meal allowances to other universities. Uh, it's an extension of uh, you know what they call loan schemes rather to, to, to other universities. Chalimbana University now has, you know, you know, uh, has loan schemes and, and many other universities. P previously it was just the University of Zambia and the Copper Belt University, but they've expanded mm -hmm. uh, you know, the loan schemes. Uh, we've seen also build uni bu the PF build universities. Uh, before 2011 we had few universities, but some have been upgraded from colleges to universities and some have been built. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of Kopasa Makasa and many others which have yeah. been built. Yeah. And, 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 and like, I, like I continue stating, there's infrastructure that we are, we are mm. seeing everywhere, all right? I, I, like the, I like the fact that you're actually stating that there is infrastructure. But what is infrastructure without substance or without being able to do what it is set up for? If we're going to have many universities but we can't take care of that one university that we, 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 we call the highest learning institution, the University of Zambia, if we cannot pay... Uh, you know, the lecturers there or the management there, if we cannot give uh, students their meal allowances, if we are not going to, you know, t take care of our students, if we're not going to allow people that come from, you know, uh, the, the, the outskirts or the rural areas to also be part of the people that will learn at the University of Zambia, then how are we going to manage those other institutions there if we are failing to fund CBU, or University of Zambia, and then we continue building structures. If we're failing to manage the ones that are already existing, how are we going to manage uh, the new ones? Are we going to be building infrastructure just so that people can look at it, and then for you, you'll come and point, since you say, you are just going to say, but bomba. Are they going to work efficiently and effectively when the already existing ones are not, are not working? So for me, infrastructure development is not something that should blind the Zambian people to believe that that is, that is a manifestation of good policies or, or development. For me, infrastructure that cannot serve its purpose is a waste of money and, uh, you know, is go only going to enrich mm. the people that are... Well, what, what would you say to, 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 to some that say that uh, Lusaka has transformed to, to levels of Dubai and Los Angeles? <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke because I, I travel. I, I, I have traveled. Mm. Uh, the other day I think I saw an article where, where a minister was talking to a U.S. envoy saying... Uh, um, Lusaka, people mistake Lusaka for, for Los Angeles? Uh, we, which Lusaka? I, I do not think so. I, I have been to LA myself several times uh, to perform and to do other projects and it's, you, it's nothing close to Lusaka. You can't, you can't even compare it. That is now what we call complacency. If leaders are going to start comparing Lusaka to Dubai, or to LA or Hollywood or any, any other place out there, then that is as good as be, it's like we are being told to say this is the standard and this is how far we can go, then now we're being taken for a ride because our leaders travel, they've seen other countries and if that, this is what they have seen to be similar to LA, then unfortunately then, then we are dealing with, uh, with wrong people that are giving us wrong statements and uh, then they do not deserve to be in the offices they occupy. You've been adamant about um, one critical issue that is ongoing and that is coming to an end to, to, tonight, uh, is it, is it, is at midnight, the, the voter registration. You've been mm. adamant to say, look, uh, we need more time for people to, 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 to register as voters and all that. The Electoral Commission of Zambia was, uh, you know, gave a 30-day period in which 
all of us should register, a total of about 9 million voters should register. Uh, just the other week, they gave an extension of four days. How would you describe how uh, the ECZ has been conducting uh, this particular very important process mm. to, 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 to our democratic credentials? It's a very important process indeed, uh, but I think that it has been marred by a lot of uh, illegality. In the first place, we know about how you know uh, voter registration is supposed to be an ongoing. A, an ongoing cycle, an ongoing process, and that hasn't happened. We have seen a situation where the old voters register has been discarded, you know, despite citizens demanding that we should continue with the old voters register and just update it or get rid of you know the names of people that are deceased and add the new voters so that it's easier we have seen the ECZ complain uh, or cry that they are underfunded currently which is why they cannot sponsor uh, you know observers to go with them maybe for the printing of ballots uh, as has been the case in in the past we look at all these happenings within ECZ and how they have continued to go against the wishes of the citizens. For me, that first of all makes it uh, an illegality, you know, in, in the way that a lot of things have been handled in, in this process. So one of the steps that I took in collaboration with other allies was to take ECZ to court. And unfortunately, our matter was thrown out. Uh, and we said, well, we have exhausted the different channels that we can use. We have used our voices. We have trusted the, 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 the judiciary. And we've gone to court to take ECZ to task to ensure that they do the right thing. And our case was thrown out. And we said, well, I think uh, people will see for themselves that uh, what we are saying, or maybe ECZ officials will see for themselves that what we are saying is the truth when we say you cannot register 9 million people within a period of 30 days. The 30 days came to an end and they failed to reach uh, you know, that target, which means that although our case was thrown out, uh, the Zambian citizens that said what ECZ is trying to do is illegal and unrealistic won. They are the ones that won despite the, th the, 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 the courts having, having thrown out that case. But the Zambian citizens won in terms of their opinion and thinking ahead of ECZ. And so if ECZ thinks that, you know, they are more intelligent than the Zambian people, what has transpired, what has happened should tell them that it is actually otherwise. Mm. And, and, and what, do you, what do you think... Um other political parties have described this to be very arrogant mm. uh, because they seem to be making decisions on their own without consulting key stakeholders like political parties, civil yeah. such organizations and members of the general public. Where do you think the arrogance of, 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 of um, the Electoral Commission of Zambia is coming from? Others uh, are saying, like, I remember when you were, I was following your, your issue when you were dragging this to court. Mm. I think one of, the, uh, uh, one of the times, I think, was it that the, the judge was in quarantine? Mm -hmm. or, or something like that, yeah. you, you know, and all those issues that were going on with your case too, it was, it was thrown out. Others say, look, um, it's that it's colliding with other powers that be to ensure that uh, probably they rig next year's elections. So you see, uh, when people are speaking and they're saying this is not the right way to do, to do it, or when people are making reference to the Constitution and saying, oh, well, if this is supposed to be an ongoing process, and ECZ is doing the opposite or doing otherwise. That is what raises suspicion among citizens and among the public. That's what makes people now say, is this really an autonomous body? Is the ECZ really controlled you know, by the people that are in its leadership? Or are there external powers or forces that are instructing the ECZ leadership? to do what they are doing because there is no way people will be speaking and all you do is you just hold a press conference where you go to tell people to say this is how things are going to go or this is the extension that we're going to make and from there you don't want to hear the divergent views, you don't want to hear what the citizens are saying and you cannot act on what the citizens are saying, then people will be suspicious and that's, that suspicion will always be there mm. and when that suspicion is there then 
it's what makes people say the elections are not free and fair, and fair. because this process that we're in right now is part of the elections. It's part of it's the electoral process. It's part of the process. So elections are not just about the time that we're coming to vote. It's about the way things are being done now. And precisely, my, my next question, you know, if, if all these things continue with, with how they are running now, where does this put the integrity of, uh, you know, the election results? Yeah, that, uh, like I said, I said uh, because of the way things are being handled, it raises suspicion. So it means that when the election results come and you see other people starting to cry foul or complaining that the elections were free and fair, you cannot blame them. You cannot blame them when the process that you are supposed to be supervising over as ECZ is not being done uh, the right way because people are complaining now and you will be held accountable. People are complaining now to say you're not doing the right thing, you need to do the right thing, and you are not. So when people come to cry and say the results are not free and fair because maybe the system that you created, you created it on your own without the consultation of other uh, players in, in, in the electoral system, you, you, you cannot blame them, mm. you know, because it is you that have continued to do it like it's a dictatorship that we're talking about where you don't want to, to listen to the public who are the voters or you do not want to follow what the constitution says. Speaking about dictatorship, back to that particular issue, um, as a country... Which seems to be happening in the ECZ. Which seems to be happening in the ECZ, according to you. Yeah, the ECZ dictating how the electoral process should be yeah. when the constitution states otherwise and when the citizens are not comfortable. Mm. Uh, but, 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 but of course, again, speaking about dictatorship, uh, not so long ago we had uh, an issue that, you know, divided us literally as a country. That was the constitution making, uh, you know, the, 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 the Buten, NDF that gave birth to Buten. Mm -hmm. uh, most of you thought that, uh, well, this is another way of increasing uh, the dictatorship that is already there because this is increasing the powers of the president and, and all those issues that came about. But one of the issues that also uh, came out after the death of Bill 10 was that uh, the president now hasn't been given a ventilator to breathe. Why? Because the constitution will not allow him to, uh, to run for a third term. And this, I think, uh, this, uh, this conversation ran for, for some time, the, the, the third term bid by, by President Lungwa and, and all that. I want to get your voice, really, on... Um, your quick thought on um, the eligibility of the president, uh, the current president, to contest next year's elections? Uh, well, I'm not a lawyer. The mm. president is. So him being a lawyer, all I can say is he knows how to interpret the law and he knows what the right thing to do is and therefore he will do the right thing. I hope and pray that he does the right thing or I should urge him to do the right thing. So I do not, ha I do, I do not have you know, the capacity to interpret the law as much as he can, but I think that him no, the, being a lawyer... The last time he did, he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually coming to that. I was saying there's been a time where he has interpreted the law wrongly and deceived people about you know, the stay of his ministers in office, and today they are paying back because the Constitutional Court ruled against, you know, what they did. And uh, it's difficult now for me to be able to say I can trust his interpretation of the law, but I want to believe that uh, he, can, he, he can still interpret it because he's a lawyer who has served for a long time, who has practiced for a long time. He can, uh, but because he, d he deceived us before, or he deceived his... Uh, his ministers before. Uh, of course, obviously, uh, it's not up to him. It's, it, it's up to the courts. So what have the courts said? Have the courts told us whether he can run or he cannot run? The courts haven't said anything. So if the courts haven't said anything, then, like I said, since I'm not the one to interpret the law, I can only wait for the lawyers themselves. Would you advise them to, to contest, really? Looking at what you've said, you've spoken about how um, he, he has presided over this mini dictatorship. Well, I, I do not know. I do not. Uh, I'm not the one to tell him whether to contest or not, because uh, I think it's institutions like ECZ and the courts 
that no from from from, from, from the explanation that you gave us mm -hmm. and the millions of the Zambian people that are watching, um, you know, you've spoken about how is turned this country into a mini well, dictatorship. I, th that part I understand, uh, and, and but I in that. terms of uh, who should contest or not, in terms of who should be on the on on the ballot paper or not, it's not me to decide. It's not me to decide. For me, what I know is that according to the constitution, any Zambian who is eligible and you know has the means or the resources to raise maybe the money that is needed or the number of supporters that is needed and can go and file their nomination successfully, can go ahead and do it. I, it's not me to say who should do it or, or not. So for me, I differentiate the discussion on him continuing or him contesting, because I do not know uh, mm. about the contesting But, he, he, but, he, but him continuing, what would be your, 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 your remark? But him continuing to, to run this country? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the president continuing to run this country, would, would, would we be, well, you said it wouldn't be in safe hands, wouldn't mm -hmm. be, you know, um, obviously things are worse. And if, 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 no, no, if, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about him continuing. I'm talking about him, uh, whether he is eligible to, to, to run for an election. That part is what yeah, I... Yeah, but, 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 but we've, we've established that. You, mm -hmm. You've given your opinion that, mm -hmm. look, we wait for the courts to, yeah. to, 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 to do their... To, to do Continuing their, to run the, to run the nation, yeah, to run the affairs of the nation is only determined by an election. So I, it's not me to say as but long from, as... But, but from, where, from where you sit there, yeah. would you... Would you well, from where I sit, I've got my, my personal views as a Zambian citizen, and, uh, I, and, and in terms of wanting to vote, I... I, I, I don't want you to disclose your vote, of yeah. course. <laughs> 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 but from, from, from where you see it, because yeah. you, uh, you're an activist, you speak, you speak on good governance and, yeah. and all those issues. And yeah. So it's because, it's of my position, because of my position mm -hmm. as an activist, I've always stated that I am nonpartisan. And so because I'm nonpartisan, I, I never use my platform to tell people who to vote for or who not to vote for because I want people to decide for themselves. But when things are wrong or when there is uh, you know, a wrong system in place or there is a wrong team in place, I will highlight it and say here it is wrong, here it is wrong because it's part of my duty and responsibility as an activist and also as a citizen to demand better. So demanding better, for me, will always be there with or without the current leadership. Even when government changes, I should still be able to highlight the areas where the government is not doing well so that those uh, issues can be improved on. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Biflo, I'll, I'll allow you to give your concluding remarks in 30 seconds as you... Uh, as you address the people of Zambia and, uh, you know, uh, probably speak to them about the importance of voting, because I think this is the last day that they're, that they're getting their, their voters cards. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, well, so to every Zambian citizen that has already registered uh, as a voter, all I can say is congratulations. You have done the right thing. I have never seen a period in time where Zambians get their voters' cards and they begin celebrating the way they are celebrating now to say they can't wait to vote because for many of them, 2021 is personal. Uh, uh, so all I can say is let us go in August uh, 2021 and cast our votes and vote for leaders that we feel are going to represent us well. And it is really up to us because whichever leaders we elect in office, they are going to be a reflection of the decision that we have made as citizens. So let us make the wise choices, let us make the right choices and ensure that we put in place a leadership that will be able to represent our needs, our interests, and ensure that it is not a selfish leadership that only looks at their own pockets but looks at the needs and the aspirations of that Zambian person who does not know what tomorrow holds. Thank you. Biflo, thank you so much again. Uh, we appreciate and we look forward to have you again. Thank you very much for hosting me. We end here. Thank you so much. I was speaking to Biflo. You heard it all. My name is Andrew Mwansa. Thank you so much, my producer and director. I'm for now. Good night and God bless Zambia.